welcome back. So to recap on the importance of a business plan, it's more than just an idea. It's a literal blueprint for business success. Simply defined, a business plan is a special document which entrepreneurs use to map out key details of their business and to plot their short-term and their long-term plans for future success and growth. Of course, every business person thinks that they have a business plan in their head, but when it's only in your head, it's really of little use. Just a general notion of where you want to go and how you'll get there will rarely get you any optimal results. But goals that are written down in concrete form are more likely to be achieved just as we discussed in the previous module. That's why self-improvement experts always strongly urge you to write down your goals. The importance of having a business plan cannot be overstated as much of your success depends upon it. Your business plan will cover such things as funding, credit from suppliers, management of your operation, finances, and promotion and marketing of your business. The creation and maintenance of a complete business plan will show whether your venture has the potential to continually grow and make a profit. Just as you wouldn't start off on a cross-country drive without a road map, you shouldn't embark on your new venture without a business plan to guide you either. A business plan won't automatically make you a success but it will help you to avoid some common issues of business failure, such as undercapitalization or lack of an adequate market. Now, after completing the pre-checklist from Part 1, the process continues with asking yourself a few questions relative to your business, and then breaking those questions down into even more detail for greater analysis. So, as a final reality check, before you begin to write your business plan, consider these six core questions. Question 1. What product or service do you want to have your business provide and what needs in the marketplace does it fill? Who are your potential customers for your product or service and why will they purchase it from you? How will you reach your potential customers? What assistance will you need? How much money for both personal and business reasons will you need in order to break even and to begin making a profit? And where will you obtain the financial resources to get to that point of profitability? Okay, so it's time to put all the pieces together. If you can't write your business plan before starting your new venture, begin the process just as soon as you can. You don't want to wait until the pressure is on to suddenly have to write one and don't expect to complete it overnight. But do remember that your business plan will constantly change and evolve and will need periodic review and modification. Begin with an organized outline of your plan and write down everything you want to include. Then organize your material in a logical order. The process of examining and spelling out your ideas will allow you to think about matters that you might not otherwise consider. This process should also trigger many fresh ideas. Don't copy any specific business plan or format. First, these documents are exclusive and proprietary. You also don't want your document to look like every other plan. Don't be afraid to be creative. After all, business plan formats are not carved in stone. You need to understand that readers will want to view the inner substance of your business through your business plan. It should be a detailed snapshot of your entire business rather than just a vague overview. Now, Since others will see your business plan, also be mindful of potential legal traps. First, speak poorly of no one, not even your competitors. Also, write everything in your own original words. If you need to share information from other sources, make sure that you cite that source. This is not only protecting you, but it also adds credibility to any claims that you may make. And always ask your attorney to review your business plan before you submit it to anyone else. Sound impressive? Well, it can be, if put together properly. 
A good business plan follows generally accepted guidelines for both form and content. There are three primary parts to any business plan. First is the business concept. Now this is where you discuss the industry, your business structure, including a short history of the company and its founder. You also talk about your product or service. You also discuss the importance of why your company and why now and how you plan to make your business a success. The second part is the marketplace section. Now this is where you'll describe and analyze potential customers, who and where they are, what makes them buy, and so on. Here you'll also describe the competition and how you will position yourself to beat it. And finally, the financial section. This part contains your income and cash flow statement, your balance sheet, your financial ratios, break-even analysis, and other financial documents as necessary. This section may require assistance from your accountant and a good spreadsheet software program. So once you've completed your research, you need to put it all in writing. Even though you'll find a wide range of business plan layouts, there are no hard and fast rules, as I mentioned earlier. Structure and format are usually dictated by the type of business that's documented and the writer of that document. But reviewing the following tips as you begin to write your business plan will be very helpful for you. First, use only topics that are appropriate for your business. In other words, you don't have to use all of the standard business plan topics. Make sure all entries are accurate. Even if you decide to do an abbreviated or shortened business plan, this is not the place to cut corners. Spend most of your research time on marketing, cash flow, and your break-even point. These three topics will require much more work than all the others combined. Write your business plan for the reader especially if you are using the plan to obtain funding. So let's talk about the specific items that all business plans contain. First, the cover. Now you want to select a high quality cover for your business plan, but it doesn't need to be fancy or expensive. You can get a wide range of ideas from any office supply store. For a relatively small and compact plan, a flexible cover may be best. But for a larger document, a hard binder might be a better choice. Next, the cover page. Identify your document, business plan for, and then whatever your company name is. Also include your name as the author, the company name, address, and phone number, the company's email address, the website address if you have one, the date, and any other information that you think might be pertinent. Next is the table of contents. List your contents in clear and simple terms and include page numbers. The executive summary. Anyone looking at your business plan will first want to know what kind of business that you're in. So the business plan should start with an executive summary which outlines and describes the product or services that you provide. The summary statement is a brief description of your business and the key elements that are laid out in the business plan. It should be short and business-like, usually no longer than one page in length. The goal of the summary statement is to entice the reader to want to read the whole document. The executive summary is the first thing that the reader sees. For that reason, it must make an immediate impact by clearly stating the nature of the business and describing its legal form of operation, whether it's a sole proprietorship, a partnership, corporation, or a limited liability company. If the business plan is written to obtain startup or operating capital, the summary should stipulate the amount and the purpose of the loan that's requested, the repayment schedule, the borrower's equity share, the debt-to-equity ratio after the loan is paid off, and the security or the collateral that's going to be offered. Next comes the company background. Now in this section you would define the nature of your business and explain when and why you launched it. 
give brief details, but also demonstrate your passion about your enterprise. This information should give the reader an overview of your product or service. Also the business format, how you will operate the business, and the main goals of the business. You should also list the legal status of the business, such as incorporated in the state of Nevada. In addition, you should attach copies of any legal incorporation papers, partnership agreements, or any other legal documents concerning the business. The company background section expands on the executive summary, describing your business in much greater detail. It usually starts with a description of your industry. Is the business retail, wholesale, food service, manufacturing, or service oriented? How big is the industry? Why has it become so popular? What trends are responsible for the industry's growth? Show how much opportunity there is in the industry. Explain the target market for your service or your product, how the product will be distributed, and the business support systems. Things like advertising, promotions, and customer service strategies. If you're using your business plan for financing purposes, explain why the money that you need will make your business more profitable. Will you use the money to expand, to create a new product, or to buy new equipment? Also describe any potential benefits or pitfalls to the community, such as new job creation, economic growth, and so on. Next, the mission statement. To provide your company's overall reason for existing and your strategic objectives. It might be to produce a full line of widgets for retailers. Or it might be to be the primary provider of a full range of personal home services for residents in Orange County. That completes the business concept and we move on to the marketplace section. First you'll provide a product and service analysis section. Identify your main offering, your product or service, and be sure to be specific. If you sell widgets, you should indicate that, but also list the particular items that are offered. Keep in mind though, even if you only offer products or only provide services, the two always go hand in hand, and that should be clarified. In other words, if you sell exercise equipment, you also provide the service of explaining the equipment, shipping it, servicing it, and so on. Likewise, a service provider, like a landscaper, might also provide certain products, or at least use certain products in providing the service. If so, point it out. Be as clear and comprehensive about your offerings as possible. Develop a detailed description of what it is that you make or provide. Include your sales projections, any product evaluations that you think will help the reader understand your business, and a comparison of your service or products with your competitor's service or product line. Be sure to describe the competitive advantage that you may have over other producers, such as higher quality, uh, uniqueness, location, credentials, or experience. Mention all the things that set you apart from the competition and that make you a better choice for your target market. The products and services section is also used to describe the product's design and charts its development within the context of production, marketing, and the company itself. If you have an idea but have not yet developed the product or the service, or if you plan to improve an existing product or service, or if you own an existing company and plan to introduce a new product or service, this section is extremely important. Don't leave any projection information out of your business plan. Next, the competitive analysis. This section describes how your business relates to the competition. Using what you've learned from your market research, detail the strengths and weaknesses of your competitors the strategies that give you a distinct advantage, any barriers that you can develop to prevent new competition from entering the market, and any weaknesses in your competitor service or product development cycle that you can take advantage of. 
Provide a brief description of your industry, trade, or profession. Define it. Give a short explanation of when the industry began, where it is today, and what the general projections for industry growth are for the next five years. Define your competitors. What new rivals are on the horizon? What are your competitive advantages? And how do you plan to compete? Where do you see yourself competitively in years to come? And why do you feel that way? The competitive analysis is an extremely important part of your business plan. Often, startup entrepreneurs mistakenly believe that their product or service is the first of its kind, and they fail to recognize that any competition even exists. But in reality, every business has competition, whether direct or indirect competition. Your business plan must show that you recognize this and that you have a strategy to deal with that competition. Then comes the market analysis. You'll need to provide an explanation of your potential base of customers, your competition, and your advertising and marketing programs. Describe your target market in detail. Include demographic features of your average customer, such as age, geographic area, income, buying habits, and so on. Identify the target market needs of your service or product. Give specific estimates as to the number of sales that you expect and how you intend to market your product or service. Describe your plans and projections for websites, professional or trade associations, word-of-mouth advertising, radio spots, cold calls, newspaper ads, networking opportunities, community bulletin boards, magazines, and so on. Indicate how each of these will be effective in your marketing message. Based on your research, interviews, and sales analysis, define your market by its size, structure, growth prospects, trends, and sales potential. Once that you've clearly defined your market and established your sales goals, present the strategies that you'll use to fulfill those objectives. Specifically, you'll need to discuss three things. One, price. Thoroughly explain your pricing strategy and how it will affect the overall success of your product or service. Describe your projected costs and determine pricing based on the profit percentage that you expect. Keep in mind that costs include materials, distribution, advertising, and overhead. Now, many experts recommend adding 25 to 50 percent to each cost estimate, especially to your overhead, just to make sure that you don't underestimate. Number two is distribution. This includes the entire process of moving the product from the factory or the point of origin to the end user. The type of the distribution network that you choose depends upon your industry and the size of your market. How much will it cost to reach your target market? Does that market consist of upscale customers who are willing to pay extra for premium product or service? Or budget conscious consumers just looking for a good deal? Study your competitors to see what channels they use. Will you use the same channels or a different method that may give you a strategic advantage? And last is sales. Explain how your sales force, if you have one, will meet its goals, including elements such as price and flexibility, sales presentations, lead generation, and compensation policies. Be sure to document how and from what sources you compiled your market information. Describe how your business fits into the overall market picture. Emphasize your unique selling proposition or your USP. In other words, what makes you different? Also explain why your approach is ideal for your market. Let's talk about your management analysis section. You'll need to define your job, your job responsibilities, and you also need to name any others who exercise key roles in your business. Provide background information, a resume, and a history of business experience for you and any partners or part owners of the company. The Vendors and Partners section. 
Include information here on regular vendors and other product or service partners who you work with. Next, you'll need to discuss your company objectives, both short-term and long-term. Similar to a mission statement, this section is usually a little more specific and concrete. It describes where you want your business to be in three to five years from now. Now, it's advisable to insert an explanation of how you will measure the success of your operation. You can use dollars, units produced, units sold, number of clients, or any other system that measures business performance. If you discuss any expansion plan, demonstrate that you will make decisions to expand based upon the realistic assessment of your past performance. Now this gives confidence to the reader that you are a serious business person, intent on running a smart operation, and that you have a solid grasp of the actions necessary to run a business. Lay out timetables that list the action steps that you plan to take. For example, if you have an inventory, show when you order items and when you expect delivery. But if you're in a service profession, show when you graduated from school and that you have all the licenses and credentials that you need to perform your service correctly. That completes the marketplace section and we move on to the final area, the financial section. Well, first you'll develop a financial analysis. This part may include whatever you need or whatever you wish to provide. Estimate the amount of capital that you will have to work with and its source. Insert your business budget, your estimates for sales, expenses, and profit. Indicate the minimum profit that you have to make in order for your expenses to be covered by your income. Typical details could also include specifics about capital base, in other words, what the financial nature of your business is and all your specific sources of revenue. Assets and liabilities. Income and expenses from the past five years. Financial objectives. In other words, how much and when will you raise your income, cut certain expenses, and so on debts and creditors, accounts receivable. For example, how much are you owed and who owes it to you? When should it be received? You might also include a page that explains your collection methods and procedures. The financial statements are the backbone of your business plan. They show how profitable your business will be in the short term and in the long term. At the very least, the financial documents package should include an income statement. Now this document details the cash generating ability of your business. It projects such items as revenue, expenses, capital in the form of depreciation, and the cost of goods sold. You should generate a monthly income statement for at least the first year of business, quarterly statements for the second year, and then annual statements for each year after that usually for three, five, or ten years. Provide a cash flow statement. This document details the amount of money coming into and going out of your business. You should set this up monthly for the first year and quarterly for each year after that. The result of the cash flow statement is a profit or loss at the end of the period, represented by each column. Profit and losses carry over to the last column to show a cumulative total. If your cash flow statement shows you consistently operating at a loss, you will probably need additional cash to meet your expenses. Most businesses have some seasonal variations in their budgets, so re examine your cash flow calculations if they look to be identical every single month. And the last document to include is the balance sheet. This financial statement paints a picture of the financial strength of your business in terms of assets, liabilities, and equity over a set period. You should generate a balance sheet for each year profiled in the development of your business. Now, After these three critical financial documents, include any relevant summary information that is not included somewhere else in the plan, but that might significantly affect your business. Among other things, this could include ratios, 
such as return on investment, break-even point, or return on assets. Your accountant can help you decide what information is best to include here. Now, many people consider the financial section of a business plan to be the most difficult to write. If you haven't started your business yet, how do you know what your income will be? You have a few options here. The first is to enlist your accountant's help. An accountant can take your raw data and organize it into a categories that will satisfy all the requirements of a financial section, including monthly and yearly sales projections. Or if you're familiar with accounting procedures, you can do that yourself with the help of a good spreadsheet program. Now you should provide an appendix. This section can include such supporting materials as your resume, financial charts, growth projections, or marketing factors. And last, provide a section called Supplemental Materials. Use this area to submit additional information, such as brochures, other financial data, or anything that you think may be helpful to your reader. Most business plans also include other supporting documents, such as tax returns, financial statements, bank statements, and other information. So with that, congratulations! You've completed your business plan. But now that it's complete, what do you want the reader to get out of it? What do you want the reader to do for you and your business? Well, throughout the business plan, you should continue to let the reader know what you specifically want from him or her. For example, if you're applying for a business loan, spell out your needs and your reasons. Leave nothing for someone else's guesswork. Well, that about covers what's found in the typical business plan and the research that you'll need to conduct in order to gather all the pertinent documents and the other information together. So with all the hard work done, Next comes the easy part of writing and assembling a comprehensive analysis for your business.